time. The specialty coffee industry has never been as innovative as it is right now. We keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious. And that's a good thing because curiosity keeps leading us down a new path. Hello, judges. My name is Siobhan. And today I want to show you how my curiosity has led me down the path to innovate the taste and experience of the coffees that I serve. The order of your courses today will be espresso, milk, and signature beverage. There's a lot of information coming your way. So I've handwritten the tasting notes in front of you for reference. And I've got these big info cards right here. Let's start. For your first course, I want to talk a bit about Luis Marcelino and his curiosity to innovate on his double fermented, honey processed pink bourbons. Luis is based in Pitalito, Colombia, where he works closely together with neighboring farmer called Jeremias. Here, the coffee grows at an altitude of 1,800 meters above sea level on rich volcanic soil, where it has an average temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. It's in these exact conditions where the pink ribbon developed its delicate floral characteristics. Now, the hand picking has been done daily during harvest to achieve uniform ripeness of the cherries, giving the coffee its sweetness. The cherries were fermented in a sealed barrel for four days. After that, Louise depulped the cherries and put them through a second fermentation process. This time, a 96-hour lactic fermentation. Carefully inoculating the lactobacillus from the previous mosto, controlling the temperature and also the available oxygen. Now, for consistent drying, the coffee was dried in a small parabolic sun dryer for 12 days. After that, stored away in its parchments in a dark room for three whole months. This highly controlled process gave the coffee its flavor note of elderflower and highlighted the delicate floral characteristics of the coffee. Now, judges, please write down the following flavor notes of your first course. Elderflower, peach, and grapefruit. So you get it with a medium thickness, a silky texture, and a smooth and long finish. Now, just to find the best balance between flavor and intensity, I'm choosing a brewing recipe of 21 grams in, 42 out in 24 seconds. And I'm going to ask you later to stir the coffee five times and discard the spoon in the white cup in front of you. Make sure when sipping, you take a sip from the lower part of the cup. This thick rim emphasizes the silky texture of the espresso, while the higher part will cover your nose and capture those delicate floral characteristics that I love so much about Luis's coffee. Please enjoy. Please enjoy. Enjoy. All yours. Please enjoy. All right, judges, whenever you're ready. Luis's curiosity did not stop at his highly controlled lactic fermentations. For your second course, I'm adding a, I'm introducing a second pink bourbon. And for this lot, Luis used the exact same protocol as he did for the first one. But this time also adding a Saccharomyces yeast to the second fermentation, carefully. This transforms those tropical flavor notes into more 
sorry, the, uh, transform the floral notes into more tropical notes. Sorry about that. Now, this is where Luis's curiosity has piqued mine to create a tropical milk drink. As you can see on the info card in front of you, I'm using 75% of the second lot and 25% of the first lot to create a harmonious balance. All right, judges are making another four espressos brewed to the same recipe, uh, same composition, sorry, to use as an element of the signature drink. But I will need your curiosity on that one. So more information about that will follow later. But first, my puck preparation. For my puck preparation, I'm using an exciting new tool called the Navigator. For me, this tool changes the game in puck preparation by offering precise distribution with just a simple touch. Eliminating guesswork and inconsistency, but most importantly, giving me an even extraction and highlighting that silky texture in the espresso. Now, it was again curiosity that has led Lawrence, the creator, to innovate. Let me show you. The Navigator's automatic distribution cycle creates the exact same path every single time, giving me an even distribution throughout all my espressos, and of course, consistent. Now inspired by Lawrence's curiosity to innovate through technology, I'm using this machine right here called the Rotovap. This machine creates an atmosphere of 12 millibars by vacuuming the reservoir containing the milk, allowing me to boil my milk at exactly 16 degrees Celsius to vaporize the water out of my milk without letting caramelization occur. But most importantly, extracting only the water, keeping sugars, carbohydrates, and fats intact. Now I've extracted 10% of the water and replaced it with coconut milk. The coconut milk will add complexity, but also enhances the tropical notes that I love so much about the milk drink. Now judges, please write down the following flavor notes of your second course. Mango, pink guava, and caramel. And I'll be right back with your milk beverages. All right, judges, for your milk beverage, I'm using 60 grams of textured milk from a cow breed called the MRY. These typical Dutch ladies are well known for their low volume, but extremely high fat and sugar content in their milk. There you go, please enjoy. Thanks. Now we've roasted this coffee separately on a drum roaster for eight and a half minutes to an end temperature of 204 degrees Celsius with a short roast development ratio of 12%. Please enjoy. By doing this, we were able to keep the intensity high and showcase both intensity and floral characteristics of this blend, resulting in that pink guava note. Please enjoy. Now the espresso recipe of the milk course is 21 in, 
42 out in 26 seconds. This shot, together with the vacuum distilled milk, thank you, will create the sweet caramel note. Please enjoy. No worries. All right, judges, whenever you're ready, it's about time for your final course. While creating this signature drink, I had to let my curiosity run free a bit. So I changed my comfort zone into a more creative one, a weekend away on an organic farm. And by doing that, I was able to explore new things, just like what we're doing in this industry right now, changing things slightly. So we keep ourselves curious and innovate. Now, my first ingredient is inspired by that curiosity to innovate. It's magnolia flower syrup, reminding me so much of the delicate floral characteristics of Luis's coffee. Now, I've picked 100 grams of the magnolia flower and 100 grams of simple syrup to let infuse for two days. This adds sweetness, of course, but also transforms that elderflower note into a more strawberry note for your signature course. I'm adding 20 grams. Your second ingredient is inspired by Luis's curiosity to innovate through fermentation. This ingredient is a lactic fermented pink elderflower. I've done this by picking 100 grams of the pink elderflower and 100 grams of raw honey that holds natural sugars. Then adding 2% salt to let infuse, to let ferment, sorry, for four days in a sealed container breaking down those sugars into lactic acid. This brings vibrancy, but also transforms the mango flavor into pineapple. I'm adding 10 grams of this. Now your third ingredient is inspired by Lawrence's curiosity to innovate through technology. This ingredient is vacuum distilled coconut water. Once again, by using the Rotovap, but this time adding coconut milk that I use for your milk beverage and using only the clear distilled part, 10%. This will add complexity again, but also transforming that pink guava note into blood orange. And of course, the beating heart of this signature drink, the one that made all the synergy possible, Luis's Pink Bourbon Espressos. Now I'm going to nitrocharge your signature beverage for a silky texture, and while I do so, please write down the following flavor notes of your final course. Strawberries. Pineapple and blood orange. As all these ingredients needed some time to ferment or infuse, I've demonstrated that for you today, judges. And today I'm serving your signature beverage at 20 degrees Celsius. When served like this, you get an even more flavor clarity and balance to the signature drink. And I'm going to ask you to please wait to taste until I've set time. And when it's time, you simply take two big sips, all right? Now, judges, thank you to highlight the delicate floral characteristics of this pink bourbon that I love so much. I'm adding a cloud containing the aromas of the coffee to your cup. I've done this by extracting eight grams of the coffee in 100 grams of hot water, then pouring it over dry ice, releasing the coffee's aromas. Now, judges, to finish off, these courses today are a celebration of our curiosity. Curiosity opens new paths for us and brings us together, creating something bigger and better than what we can do alone. It's this synergy that keeps pushing us forward, eager to innovate. Now, please, when I say time, carefully open the lid, enjoy, and remember to stay curious. Time. Yeah!